ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Number One Crew of Mistakes Podcast Commission, in the pink corner, weighing in at one quarter boulder, it's Lincolnshire's <laughs> answer to Alan Titmarsh, <laughs> Glenn, the Overlord Knight. <laughs> In the hell corner, hailing from <laughs> Norway. <laughs> uh, it's the uh, Havard. I'm not saying your surname, and I haven't pronounced your first name right, so never mind. <laughs> and, and finally, from a galaxy far, far away in Sweden, <laughs> it's the ruler of Tatooine, <laughs> KJ the Hut. <laughs> I think this is the best one yet. Brilliant. Welcome, Tim. <laughs> hey, up, lads. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I'm a bit warm now. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> did you uh, yeah. Did you announce yourself in that thing? Uh, no, I didn't. No, I'm uh, I'm Tim from Turgwork. Hello. <laughs> Good to have you with us, Tim. Thanks for joining us, mate. Nice to be here. (laughs) That's going down with one of the best introductions ever. (laughs) Yeah. Cheers. I I wrote that while I was at swimming with the kids. (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't swimming, obviously. Oh, dear. So, uh, how's it going, guys? Have you all had a good week? No. No? (laughs) All right, let's move on to KJ then. <laughs> yeah. Please do, please do. Yeah, no, the week's been fine. <laughs> that intro made me forget everything I've done the last week. So, yeah. <laughs> but I think it's fine. Yeah? Yeah. Fabulous. What about you, Tim? You had a good week? Um, yeah, as, as, we, as we were saying, I've uh, had Monday off, so what day is it now? Wednesday. Yeah, I've only yeah. done two days, so... Fantastic. Yeah. Good stuff. I just don't know what day it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a sign on. of a good week or a bad week. <laughs> well, yeah, could be both. Either, but yeah, so far so good. Fantastic. Have you been on that lathe? Uh, I have. Yeah. Um, yesterday, I finished that ash ball that uh, tried to run away from me. Uh, so that's that's now an actual thing, and it didn't destroy itself. And uh, I popped into a wood turning shop today while I was in Doncaster and. Bought some massive blanks, so nice. Get stuck into them, so. So is that going to be your your interest for the next several months? <clears throat> um, no, I've the, the the plan is to put it away soon again, um, but I want to I want to make a like a few big fruit bowls for one for my auntie whose husband made the lathe and left it to me okay. um, when he died, and uh, my cousins his daughters and then one for our house as well so I've got about four massive bowls to do fantastic but it's, it's cool. fine in the wood you say he made the lathe yeah yeah so he was an engineer at, um, have you heard of Marshalls they make like concrete flags and stuff like that yes yeah 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 so he was that's I, I assume they've got plants all over the UK but yeah. one there's two close to me and he worked at one of them um, and he was like the manager of the engineering department and just made the lathe out of spare bits that were kicking around at work. Jesus. So he stole um, it one bit at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like the Johnny Cash song about the Exactly. Like the great escape. <laughs> so this is why people keep saying, like, how fast is it? I'm like, I've no idea. Like, why don't you read the labels? They're in a label. <laughs> like, what make is it? It's not a make. <laughs> people just keep well, telling some... you to turn it up, don't they? Mm. Yeah, yeah, and now we have turned it up. They're telling me to turn it down, so you can't win. That, that's one thing I've learned about wood turning is you get the most contradictive advice I've ever known in any woodworking thing I've ever done. You get to hear, like, as I say, one person says, oh, that's you're at the wrong angle, or you're at the right angle, or you need a different choke, or that's the right choke, or it's too fast, too slow. So I'm just ignoring everyone now. Just doing your own thing, going your own way. Yeah, just just that like usual. You just pick bits of advice from certain people, don't you? Yeah, I guess that's the best approach. It yeah. feels like the wood turning community is some of the weirder ones in the maker community. Oh, right, yeah. No <laughs> offense, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's just got a lot weirder. <laughs> uh, 
folks from yeah. alien, alienating mm-hmm. another part of our audience, KJ. <laughs> <laughs> So you're, you're, you're joining the uh, Wood Turners thing soon, aren't you, Glenn? Oh, I'm not. Are we allowed to talk about that? Is that a secret? No, it's not a secret. I'm <laughs> <laughs> I'm being bullied into this whole wood turning thing. Yeah, you are, yeah. I don't, I don't really want to leave in my workshop, I'll be honest. <laughs> we'll, see, we'll have to How see how it goes. How do you know you don't want to lathe? Sorry? How do you know when you don't want to lathe if you ain't got a lathe? I've not felt the need to have a lathe and I don't really have the space for it. There's there's other things I want first. But, you know, it's not yeah. it's not really up to me. She's um Michelle's off to a uh, a wood turning group I think at the beginning of February so in a few days time probably. And um to give it a give it a try so we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah, nice. Yeah, if she likes it we'll probably end up with one. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's any probably about it, is it? No. I'll, I'll just keep sending you links to one. My friend's selling one, actually. It's humongous, though. It's the size of a double-decker bus, that thing. It looks bigger than it is. It's only, uh, it'd be a nice little starter lathe, that. But it's a bit more for spindles and balls, I think. It doesn't look like something you can put away and slide under a bench, to. No, you can't do that. No. Well, it depends how big your bench is, but um, no. <laughs> no, you can't. It's a... Uh, it's a fixed thing. <laughs> there is actually uh, quite a few lathes uh, being given away uh, or sold for very cheap in Norway. Um, but it's the, it's the larger ones. Um, I did actually look at one uh, when I had a weak moment. Uh, it's, the same, it's the same brand as your uh, drill press, Glenn. Oh, uh, Shepak. Yeah. They have this table one that's collapsible. And I like, ooh, that's nice, because then, then I can just compact it and put it away and never use it. Uh, but then I saw a YouTube video of someone using it, and ooh, you couldn't turn a feather on that one. You could, uh, I mean, you just uh, showed the picture of uh, a tree to, <laughs> to it, and it started breathing heavily. So uh, I don't think that's an option. I'll be honest with you as well. Yeah. That, that Shipak drill press, I'm not very impressed with that at all. Should have spent an extra well, bit and got the Bosch version. Yeah, well, <laughs> some so, some has to learn the hard way, but that, that's that's life. <laughs> I just did it for all the consumers out there, just to make their life easier. Yeah. <laughs> that being said, I mean it's it's not different at all. But basic, it's the handle and the color. Everything is basically the same, and I have to jerry rig some uh, vice for myself, and uh, so yeah, it's. It's not the best, but it. I like the variable speed motor and the, the size of it. But other than that, I w- of course, I would want a proper one, but there's the workshop size. <laughs> Always the limit. Uh, stop being concerned about the size of your workshop and just cram as much stuff as you can in there and then just find a way to <laughs> cope with it. That's, <laughs> That's your style, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not, uh, it's not stressful at all. <laughs> do you fit uh, comfortably in your own workshop or no, is it as no, crammed no, no. as it looks in your videos Honestly, right, all around my sides I've just got like puncture holes and bruises just from bumping into stuff <laughs> you know, I walked backwards into my tool rest on the lathe yesterday and there's like a big gouge in my side not, not a turning gouge just, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah I'm just constantly hurting myself in there but luckily nothing serious so while we're on the well, subject I I of your workshop, I mean, it was a little bit earlier than anticipated, but one of your friends got wind you were going to be on the podcast and sent a question in for you. All right, yeah. You ready? I'll play that for you right now. Yeah. Uh, hi, Jim. <laughs> uh, just a quick question. Um, how on earth do you manage to keep your workshop so clean and organised? I just, I just struggle, and I enjoy watching your stories because it's just really refreshing how everything seems to have its place, you know. Um, yeah, any tips and tricks on that, that would be brilliant. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Can't imagine who that was. Oh. Yeah. Um, I, I assume that was Welsh Thomas. Oh, yeah, definitely. He's known with the accent, yeah. that Welsh. <laughs> um, it's Just being tidy is just obviously a gift I've got. <laughs> yeah, it, you've, you've either got it or you haven't, and uh, I don't have my dad tidying up after me after every day's work. So, 
<laughs> it's just that, really. I'm going to do it all myself. So I don't. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the secret, then? Does uh, Tom get his dad to tidy up after, his, after him? Yeah, he does, yeah. And uh, <laughs> makes all his projects as well. <laughs> <laughs> Manages his social media? Uh, yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure he does, yeah. And uh, they've actually got matching hands as well. If you ever see the hands <laughs> next to each other, they're ex- exactly the same. <laughs> it's Tom that does all the chimney work, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't think his dad uh, were a chimney sweep like Tom. I don't know how he got into it. I don't know if his mum were a chimney sweep or something. Was that a metaphor for something? Chimney work, or am so I missing something? That might be weekends, yeah, but um, I think it's <laughs> something to do with his mum. You might, you'll have to get him on and ask him, I don't know. <laughs> so what's the dust level in the workshop at the moment, Tim? Are you up to...? Uh, it's bad. It's it's as bad as it's ever been, yeah. But I did... Um, I managed to move the lathe slightly closer towards my uh, air filter the other day, so now we can reach the remote to turn it on. <laughs> um, so it's getting better, but it, yeah, it's, uh, ev- everything is covered in sand and dust. Everything, <laughs> especially since I turned the lathe up full whack, and uh, I've got a little sanding thing for the drill now. It, it's just everywhere. Jesus. Um, like my eldest Lucas, he's just had a birthday and um, he's, he got a new bike and a set of golf clubs and they ended up in garage and they just absolutely lathered in it. Oh, <laughs> I hope he doesn't see him. I'm going to <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to like air compressor it all off before he goes in there. L- luckily he's not allowed in because it's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> in so many ways. Yeah, in a lot of ways. It is, to be fair. It's not, it's not safe for kids. Oh, that, that would actually be a nice project. Um, my uncle, I, he had an upgrade of his barn, and he had, actually had like fixed connection point for the pressure washer and uh, I think also for air compressor, so it didn't have to use very long hoses. Yeah, nice. maybe you could Maybe you can have permanently mounted nozzles, so instead of going around blowing everything off with a pistol, then you could just open the gate and press a button and it just <laughs> purges everything. I mean, it, it shouldn't be more than an afternoon of plumbing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and have, having them going in different cycles so it actually blows them, blows it out as well. There'll, yeah. there'll just be like a, a, a queue of like twisters coming out my garage door and blowing around <laughs> this field. Yeah. <laughs> and then, of course, you could just mount a igniter at the end there because if you get the ratio right it's going to be a big fireball every time like an afterburner <laughs> dragon mouth workshop yeah. nice like it's bo- yeah. both clean and disinfected that's nice <laughs> that's not yeah. the birds living in my uh, neighbor's roof as well like the old fireball going past every now and again <laughs> let's change the subject anybody got any making done this week well, um, I got some filming done. That's basically it. I've been under the weather, but I, I managed to pull myself together for 10 minutes filming myself uh, spreading butter on a piece of toast. <laughs> that's, that's basically the pinnacle of my achievements this week. <laughs> I'm glad you that's added up. spreading butter onto toast. And I thought you were just going to say spreading. Or like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're spreading oh, butter. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> content is content. Yeah. Butter is involved. So your knife all done then, Havard? Yeah, and it's weird because I filmed everything and I've edited everything up until the last part where I'm actually showing it in use. And I, I still have some time. Of course, usually I would have just published it and be done with it, but now I have to hold back, so... I'm just getting new ideas, so almost every night I'm just strolling back to my computer and tweaking things and laughing a bit when I'm adding new <laughs> features and and so on. So it's going to be the most edited video ever. <laughs> That's not so a bad thing, is it? I, I even pulled out the green screen and <laughs> had a laugh <laughs> one evening. And it turns out I haven't used that for years. And of course, after I switched to DaVinci, 
and it's probably also just in general but the the green screening uh, software has become rapidly more improved since last time so you didn't have to be too careful about lighting or anything you just slap something green up and it worked perfectly <laughs> yeah it's like magic yeah KJ any, any, anything making done? Yeah, I've done, I got some progress on the knife as well. Uh, it's uh, finished the, all the rough grinding. Uh, only had a fine grinding left, and I, I felt I had to up my my grinder game. So I actually <laughs> went and bought the cheapest <laughs> belt grinder I could find, like uh, forty five quid or something oh. like that. The the cheapest cheapest. Thing. Uh, I think the motor is like 250 watts or something like that, so it really struggles if you push something hard in it, but it's <laughs> yeah, it's it's fine. It's much better than doing it by hand or uh, some other weird way with an angle grinder or such a thing. So so that went well. I just did mine, so now I'm sp- I just did mine on the belt sander. Yeah, but <laughs> I felt it's... I didn't really have that much control over it <laughs> when I use my handheld belt sander so yeah um, so now now I'm struggling with the handle yeah. because it doesn't look good but it has to be beefy to actually hold the, the electronics parts so yeah I'm struggling with that how are you making the handle? Uh, it's uh, two, it's uh, an old piece of oak trim I've taken and, and chopped down and sanded to some sort of uh, handle shape, shape, <laughs> <laughs> so to say. But it it doesn't look as good as I was hoping it would. So I have to rethink some of the yeah profiles, if you, that's what you say. I have some ideas, but I don't know. It might be an ugly handle. Hopefully, the fact that it hopefully will light up will take take people's eyes from the handle and to the, <laughs> the shiny part that's probably going to be too chi- shiny to actually look at yeah, that's the that's the thing that got me intrigued that's when you drop the bomb that uh, you're going <laughs> to incorporate the electronics and I, I did a i did a quick search here because there are actually some people who are tagging along in the knife along and of course then i stumbled over a knife maker who made uh, a blade from a video game which actually had like a, a plasma beam in between like a double bladed knife. Mm. So I was, uh, when I saw your blade, it's like, mm, is it going the plasma route? I mean, it, it would feel appropriate for KJ. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I think it was, uh, <laughs> I think it was Turgworks or Tim that uh, kicked off the, as the first knife alonger with a prison shank. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, that that seemed like such a such a better idea in my head than it actually turned out. Because uh, I don't know if you guys do this, but like you'll get an idea and you think, "Oh, I'm going to do it this way," and then like take my time, and then you go in there and just just lash something together in about two minutes, and then you can't really be bothered doing a better job of it. I do that all the time. <laughs> yeah, that sounds yep. much like me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> At least, at least I won. I got, I got my video out first. That's something, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, there was no competition yeah, at that not point. A competition. You, you were in the lead uh, from the start, and then yeah, it's up to everyone else to outdo you. <laughs> there's, there's still no competition. Just, just put it out there. <laughs> <laughs> that might be. <laughs> in the end. Still in the I lead. Did, uh, I did knows? try to start another one out of some tool steel I've got, but... Um, my battery ran out on the grinder and it's just still left on the bench with uh, half half cut. <laughs> <laughs> Can you not just wrap some sandpaper around a piece of round wood on your lathe? Uh, yeah, probably, yeah. i do that. Sounds much more fun. Yeah. I just, I <laughs> yeah. would actually like to try and make a proper knife, but I can't remember if I have or not. I don't think I have. Oh, I have. <laughs> yeah, I have. I say proper. It wasn't proper, you know, just like sharpen a file again or something. But yeah, yeah, I did. I did manage one once, but then you can't put an handle on it because it's a file and you can't drill them. Oh, I can't. Not with the kit I've got. Part. Definitely just can't be asked trying to anneal it. Can you not just epoxy a handle to it? Yeah. Yeah, possibly. 
never really thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> That's always a solution, Tim. <laughs> yeah, just just keep the file handle on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or that. <laughs> I think Havard came up with the perfect solution the other day. Went to the supermarket market and just bought a knife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a low effort kit. <laughs> came in a yeah. box and everything. <laughs> <laughs> just how I imagined it. <laughs> really. <laughs> I've I've noted uh, at least two extra participants: um, all the makes and Cormorant Craft Moira. Um, Actually doing a decent job. As oh, far I, as I can see. Andy had started one. We'll have to have a look at that. Yeah. Yeah, it started on the blade. Right, it, it makes really nice stuff, so I'm sure he'll probably win. Yeah, I mean, it, as KJ said, it's it's not a competition. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, of course, it's not a competition. I mean, the, a the hosts are beaten already. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on all angles. Oh, it's, Obviously, it's nice I've won see. already, though, as we've discussed. <laughs> Yeah, you can never argue with being first. Yeah, yeah that's true. Uh, but I really like to see that uh, that uh, Howard inspired uh, uh, another uh, all wooden uh, butter spreader, uh, butter knife. That looks really good. Yeah, it did yeah. look good, didn't it? Really did. <laughs> I've just remembered I made a wooden cake knife. It's in the kitchen. So if, we, if we cut this out, I'm going to put that in in uh, on the tenth of Feb. <laughs> just, just, look, just look surprised. <laughs> that was a nice little segue into cakes, Tim. Yeah. Oh, yeah, cakes. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I do. I do. I like decorating cakes. You, you, you like decorating cakes. So you're also fantastic at it as well. You, it's. You... Uh, <laughs> It's I sort of find it easier than it sort of looks, if that makes sense. Yeah. It's how. No. It's like the like the dinosaur one I did the the last sort of really intricate one. It was just the shape of it's pretty hard, but I've always been able to make stuff out of plasticine and whatnot, and it's just plasticine really in it icing. Yeah. Similar enough, but and then just by the spray on stuff, the spray on colouring, whatever it's called, lack everything. Right. Uh, and it just looks miles better than it should do. <laughs> they look fantastic. <laughs> uh, okay, my, it's, uh... my wife's a brilliant cake, cake decorator, and you know your, yours are equally as good, which is really good. Oh, it's nice to see, yeah. It's just, a, just uh... one of the many facets on Tim's bow that probably not a lot of people knew about. <laughs> no, I don't. I think I sometimes share them to stories. I don't ever put the post on. I don't know why not. It's not like I've got a really mad woodworking following that I've got to keep up with it's uh, <laughs> I could definitely get away with posting a cake every three times a year <laughs> yeah I think we're all we'll um, think of ourselves as makers don't we not woodworkers yeah well, that's that's why I just called my account Turg Works rather than like Woodworks or anything else because I thought I don't know what I'm actually going to make here so <laughs> I'll just keep it pretty open why is it Turg Works by the way uh, Turg is just what our last calls me because my initials are TRG. Ah, oh, okay. And then works, I just took it off Jackman Works. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 there's not that much to it, really. Yeah, it's fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I only went number one projects because I live at number one and projects, so it doesn't label me as any particular kind of maker. Ah, uh, yeah, nice. <laughs> what are you going to do if you move? I could probably keep the name. I don't think it lasts. <laughs> I mean, I it, it, it doesn't narrow down your choices a bit, but there are other number ones out there, so <laughs> yeah. you just have to be a bit picky on where you move. Yeah, we'd have to change yeah, the name of the podcast and everything. <laughs> yeah. It's got to have a double garage and be at number one, otherwise I'm not moving. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine if, Sounds I, about right. if I moved to a city where they have really, really long streets, you know, 2003 projects... <laughs> <laughs> I think that's actually like the inside of my garage. <laughs> I just thought it was the the best of the best of the best projects out there. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't think I can. Uh, I don't think I can say that. <laughs> Not yet, no. but one day. <laughs> yeah. You know what they say: dress for the job you want, not the one exactly. you have, and. Uh, <laughs> 
That's why I went with my name, setting the bar low. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the more I fuck up, the better it is. So, just just more and more honest, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, more and more honest, and less and less input. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's a channel called the uh, Technology connections and every november he has like a low effort november and i seem to have adapted this for january it's like low effort i've hardly cut <laughs> in any of my videos i just uh, snipped at the the front and back of every clip where i'm moving the camera stand <laughs> other than that i just kept everything in and pressed upload so <laughs> I, th I think that's really unfair on yourself actually have you added music to the last one <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 I, I downloaded someone else's music and slapped it on there so yeah <laughs> hardcore editing <laughs> it's like a, a, a wall full of guitars and like oh this guy has made something let's download that <laughs> have you ever have you ever made your own music for your videos have I no I'm uh I'm not a musician. I don't think I would spend way too much time on making something and it would be bad and it would be so <laughs> cliche. So it's, uh, but now I've seen you can uh, incorporate uh, AI to music making. So then it may be a possibility, but then again, it wouldn't be me. So why not just download it from the YouTube <laughs> <Yeah>. library? <laughs> why not? No, I'm, I'm the same. I, I, I used to like just take little samples and stuff and cut them up on an app on my phone and thought, oh, I could do music for my uh, reels on this and for <laughs> fuck that. No, it's <laughs> not a chance. <laughs> See, it's all, it sounds awful. It's going to take me hours and hours. No way. And then you can only use it once, really, can't you? No, you can use it uh, <laughs> all the time. I just uh, recently switched uh, my music because somebody commented, like, good video, but... God damn! I'm tired of that tune. I'm like, hey, point taken. <laughs> let's uh, let's spend an hour see if I can't find anything else. <laughs> Was that me that commented that, or did I just think it? <laughs> no, that uh, that was s someone else. But then again, I love feedback, so that's uh, that's okay. It's just laziness. I think I came out on the other side of liking it, being annoyed, and then. The content with it always being there <laughs> yeah but that's so the problem as well if you keep it in too long then you're associated with it and then when you change up people will like what happened to that song and like i just kept it there because i'm lazy so that's a that's a trap i think a lot of people fall into they just well we need to get this done so we take the first and the best and then uh, that just sticks <laughs> I have unfollowed people because they don't change the music though. I can't remember the guy's name now, but every every single video was the same song. And I'm like, this is driving me mad. <laughs> like, it was just like, just change the music, man. Why would you want the same song in every single video? It was like hundreds of videos. Oh, yeah, that's um, a that's, uh, bourbon moth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it worried. I think it was so, but I can't remember his name now. <laughs> but, yeah, I had to unfollow him that long ago. I've forgotten, I've forgotten his name, but I just thought. No, it's just, you can't do that. <laughs> you just wash your mouth out anyway, Havard. Bourbon Moss, another Rubio ambassador. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or the cult. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How did you get into all that, Tim? You're, um, you're actually ambassador. The Rubio for, thing. The Rubio thing. You're a D sniffs as well, aren't you? And are you affiliated with um, Evolution as well? Yeah, slightly, yeah. Um, so, the Rubio thing, I just dropped lucky. Like like with everything else, really. There's never been any sort of planning into it. Um, J-Mo Makes, uh, if you know him, he, he messaged me one day saying, oh, these guys from Rubio uh, are having a training date and uneaten and um, they want you to go. And I was like, yeah, sound all right, I'll go for that. <laughs> uh, there was there was six of us, and I'd only just started seeing Rubio being used on YouTube videos and stuff. I thought it was like an American brand, like everyone does. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'll go check it out. Uh, and they just made all of us on, there were six of us there. We went to the headquarters, had a full day trading, use what you want, gave us like boatloads of free wood afterwards. I'm still using wow. it. 
card. Um, yeah. And then they gave us a call a couple of months later and just went, oh, do you want to be an ambassador? And we're like, yeah. Because like, genuinely, I'd never used it before. I'd just seen it used and thought, oh, that, that would be a load of bollocks. It can't be that good. Um, but it, gen- it is as good as it looks. Right. Um, so, yeah, I've just been involved with them ever since. It's been That's been great. Really good. Yeah, I'm hoping Shell's going to come in with a sample or two from her Ladies' Day. So I can have a sniff of it. It's supposed yeah. to smell really nice, Sorry, isn't just, it? Uh, yeah, it does smell nice. Yeah, I've not I've not always got a sense of smell. Um, it sort of okay. comes and goes. Uh, <laughs> but when I've when it does come back, I'm like, oh yeah, it does smell real. This stuff. Right. Um, uh, yeah, and then O three A. Um, that was just from being on the Rubio stand, and Wayne, who owns Woodwork Supply in O three A, he just came over talking to the guys at Rubio. I got talking to him. Uh, and then he sent us some, and now he just sends me stuff when I've run out of stuff. Oh, nice! And, uh, <laughs> he asked me to be, asked me to join the affiliate thing. So. Fantastic! Yeah, just like, as I say, just you just it's just talking to people, isn't it? If yeah, you yeah. Just talk to people. Um, I'm going to say don't be too drunk at woodworking shows, but that hasn't <laughs> happened. What I get, get off well, that the depends door. on how well you handle your liquor. I think. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and then evolution just came from the scrap wood build off. I, I put a story up saying uh, are any companies want to um, support the build off because it just didn't feel like the prize um, was any good this year. Uh, and then loads of companies got in touch, and one of them were evolution. And they said, uh, "Join the affiliate program. We'll send you a table saw, uh, and whatever we send you, we'll send out as a prize to the winner." Fantastic. Uh, yeah, so. Yeah, Martin, uh, Martin Oakfield's creative was made up with all his prizes, wasn't he? Yeah, well, he uh, he asked to swap his first prize for a track saw. So that's oh, only okay. just come out from Evolution, I think, or quite recently. And uh, he seems chuffed to bits with that. Nice. Yeah. So, uh, Scrapwood Build-Off, where did all that come from? What gave you that idea to start it in the first place? Uh, where did that come from? I, th- uh, I think... People were like running competitions, like it was like a sheet of plywood competitions, or one um, two by four or three by two, or whichever way round you want to say it. Or I don't know, like Americans say it the wrong way around, don't they? Or we say it the wrong way around. Um, <laughs> but it was like one piece of wood, and, and I, I didn't want to enter that. You obviously had to buy a piece of wood. Yeah. And at the time, I never bought. I still don't really buy wood now, apart from those turning blocks I mentioned earlier. Um, so I just thought, well, we'll just use like pallet wood or scrap wood. Oh, that was it. There were some pallet wood build offs going on, um, and I didn't want it just just be pallets because obviously there's boatloads of wood that gets chucked away, um, and it, it was just that, just about not throw, getting uh, wood thrown away as much so just save oh, okay. whatever you can so I've tried to just keep it as sort of a, as loose as possible and then it's just grown from there really and that that was just again uh, I thought of the competition I sent a few emails out to certain companies I was always already involved with Rubio uh, so they were the first people on board uh, and it's just grown from there so this this is the third year of it now so right. hopefully next year we're going to have like in, like proper international prizes, not just one of my wanky t shirts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, should shouldn't undersell those t shirts. <laughs> but that being said, materials, I mean the scrap wood challenge is uh something I like because we we all hoarder uh yeah. materials and of course I just realized that my supplier of plywood has just run out uh and at the prices that I found affordable, so now I'm struggling finding the quality at the price I, I'm willing to pay. And then I stumbled over another company who sells bamboo. They're selling out their stocks, so or they're selling it out there cheap. And I was thinking, mm, I'm planning on building a table. And those uh, bamboo planks, they look really good. So I'm thinking, maybe that is an alternative. And then I did a quick search on YouTube to see how it is to work with and it it's like working with a reasonably hard wood. It it splinters a bit when you're doing cross cuts so you need to t- 
take precautions uh, with that. But other than that, it seems like a good material to work with. Yeah, just just keep the pandas off it and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what what precautions do you have to wear a condom when you're cutting it? Or? <laughs> yeah. Well, at least it can't hurt, um, <laughs> unless you've had the snip, of course. Um, <laughs> but yeah, other than that, it's a uh, tape. Uh, of course, uh, Tim has his uh, prison shank, so you can make a scorch line, and uh, there's a lot of options. <laughs> <laughs> In in the wood that is not the not the not the, <laughs> the wood. <laughs> Going back to the snip. <laughs> Thought I needed to clarify. <laughs> I have heard it's quite nice to use the bamboo stuff. Um, did Far Rise oh, Far Rise Furniture or one of them lot? I think they did a build out of bamboo or somebody has anyway that I've seen. Yeah, I need to look them up. Yeah, I've not come across anybody using bamboo um, in the oh, workshop yeah. anyway. <laughs> Plenty in the gardens. I, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I, I see, I instantly regret my choice in the knife along. Um, but of course, I'm running out of time and I can't get an appointment fast enough because we have been discussing, me and the wife, uh, about me having the snip. And uh, how cool wouldn't it if you make the knife <laughs> <laughs> that the doctor used to make the snip? That would be a brilliant video. That would be clickbait. <laughs> Havard, I would consider it an honour if you'd use my knife. <laughs> <laughs> you could get one of those tiny knives off Moonshine Metalworks. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you you wouldn't want a big knife for that job, would you? <laughs> have, have the snip by your blow dart or something. <laughs> well, then again, you you want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just go into the doctor with your knife and say, "Do, do it with this." <laughs> a wooden butter knife. Ouch! Yeah. <laughs> then there's nothing left. <laughs> yeah, it takes some spread in, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's for. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I've made some progress on my knife anyway going back to the knives <laughs> <laughs> have you attached a microscope to it yeah <laughs> <laughs> got some last minute design changes <laughs> it's basically like a really sharp Hubble telescope now <laughs> Go on, KJ, you can say something. No, no. Yeah. Go ahead, tell us about your knife. (laughs) Uh, So I decided to make a pattern on it. And I was going to, I wanted it to be like a Damascus pattern. That's not really worked. Um, And I was going to use the laser to start out with. The reason I went off the laser is it's going to take 15 hours per side to engrave. So, um, lasered some masking tape on it instead and then I tried um, etching it with chemicals first which kind of just messed it up a little bit and then I went on to feeling Apollo inspired from one of your past videos KJ I decided to electro etch it which has worked a treat Mm. yeah Yeah, that's really fun quite pleased with the pattern on it I mean it doesn't look like Damascus but it looks different how did you mark out the pattern did you just paint it and then scratch what you wanted off it or no, Any so uh, I ran it through the laser on Lightburn and um, basically um, just copied a Damascus pattern, imported that, and then it um, the laser just burnt away all the bits I didn't want, give it a quick wipe over with some um, thinners, and it leaves bare metal underneath and a really nicely cut edge. Oh, nice, okay. Yeah, yeah it was pretty mm. smart. It, it looked really good with the blue tape on, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I did not understand what that was, the blue stuff, but now I see that it's tape that's burned away. Yeah. 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 So yeah. what's the um, what's the chemical? Is it just salt water or bicarb or what? Oh, for the electro etching? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just, just salty water, yeah. Is yeah. it? Because yeah. I've been thinking yeah. about making um, a plaque for my lathe, because obviously there's no badges on it, because... Like, my uncle Bob made it so um, on on old transformers and stuff they had like brass 
plates that were etched. Oh, I thought okay. I could like design some and then etch it, but that's as far as I've got with it. But that's yeah. I could maybe do that. Can you etch on brass, brass KJ? I think so. Yeah. I haven't tried it. It's really simple to do, Tim. It's um, it's literally just um, a nine volt battery. Right. Okay. Or use a transformer instead. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, like I think I used volt. like 12, 12 volts or something like that. That's a volts. <laughs> I can get one of them really easier. <laughs> Jesus, Tim, make sure you film it if you do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just etched in like half a second. My, my, last, my last ever reel, but God, it was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, as I say, so I just used a nine volt battery, which worked pretty well, and just you just mask all the areas off that you don't want to etch. Yeah, it's straightforward. Well, I don't, when I saw your photo, I thought you'd painted it and then lasered the paint off. No, no, no. Which no, I suppose no. you could do that though, couldn't you? Yeah, 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 definitely. Like some nail polish or something like that. I think it's good for that sort of thing. Yeah, I, I got a nail polish. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Use it all I just uh, just let me know. I'll, I'll, I'll trade you a batch for a T-shirt. I mean, <laughs> being the father to only girls, I have it has opened up to things I never knew. I mean, I have so much glitter and nail polish, and well, I can start my own craft channel. <laughs> <laughs> I think glitter is probably the worst thing ever invented. Yeah, it's up there, definitely. It's just horrendous. <laughs> the problem is, I keep chugging it out, but of course, they keep just stocking up at kindergarten, and I mean, and they're bringing it home in their shoes, in their pockets, <laughs> in every crevice of the hair, armpits. I don't know. It's, I mean, I have to shake them every night, and it's like five pounds of glitter just. <laughs> You just need an air compressor by the front door and just blast them off as they walk in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just nozzles like everywhere. A, <laughs> yeah, uh, like a miniature car wash. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, the, the only time I, I felt glitter has been good to me when was when I got one of those scammy kind of leathers that's that want you to fill in some form and send it back and then you you're uh, subscribed to something and owe them a couple of grand a month or something like that. Scammy thing. So I, I just took it and more or less where, we, where you put your information more or less screw you and fold it up and pour glitter into it and put it in the envelope and send it off to them. <laughs> I did, it felt appropriate. I didn't use glitter, but it was more common previously that you got this... Uh, like ads with the envelopes uh, with the, the prepaid return... Uh, and at some point I thought they had to uh, to pay for the return but of course they they have probably paid a fixed amount but I filled it with as much heavy stuff as I could and returned it to them so it's basically slabs of broken concrete anything I could fit into that envelope and really taped it together and I shipped it back to them <laughs> well, of course they since they paid a fixed price they didn't pay extra for the weight but I mean they got a lot of concrete. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think you just pissed off the postman more than anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most likely. <laughs> but that's the brilliant thing, because in those days there there was no tracking on it or, or anything, so they didn't know who they sent it to and who they got it back from. So, And I guess I'm not the only one. So it seems like oh. KJ was uh, running in the same circles. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how, how many of us chaos goblins who did that to them, how, how many, how large percentage of the posts they get are just random shit from people who are angry. Shell's uh, nan always fills up birthday cards and things with glitter and confetti and things. I always thought it was a nice endearing thing, but now I see it's her being evil. <laughs> yeah. Someone <laughs> sent me a, a 30th birthday card and that was full of glitter and I had a beard at the time and my nephew <laughs> just tipped it all over me and rubbed it all in my beard. I was fuming. So you just can't get it out, can you? <laughs> you must have looked marvellous <laughs> yeah I did yeah it's like an angry disco ball <laughs> <laughs> oh that's marvellous <laughs> so Tim you 
you're a bit of a pillar of the maker community. I feel like you you pretty much know everybody. Is that all just uh, through in Instagram or through the shows or? Yeah, um, probably probably going to Maker Central. I would have said yeah because yeah you, the you, Hilton Bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, obviously, you talk to people online, but then you go to like Maker Central and you just meet people who you either have never seen on Instagram or you barely speak to on Instagram and just strike up a, like a proper conversation with, with an actual person and then obviously as soon as you go on the piss with someone you're like you you know they're like you're the best friend for life aren't they? <laughs> true. Yeah, yeah. true true story yeah I think well, that's uh, basically what happened with Wells Thomas he um I'd never I can't remember if I ended up following it I think someone shared a story of his for the first Maker Central I went to or the second one um, and I just dropped him a message and just went, when you get here, nobody's phone's working. If you if you need to get in touch with anyone, just get in touch on Instagram. And he did, and I haven't been able to get rid of him since. <laughs> <laughs> when are you and Tom going to uh, tie the knot? <laughs> <laughs> we hadn't asked. Has he not? <laughs> no, not yet. Actually, I've got another message here for you, Tim. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> He's not stood outside my window. <laughs> <laughs> Upon your roof. Look over your lips, don't they? With a, with a boom box over his head, playing love songs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a really good idea if you just thought about it. It's like some some point in the show and you play after it and then <laughs> look outside your window. <laughs> 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 like a full blown Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> like that, that would take some organising. <laughs> you on the whiskey you, you, I wish <laughs> I uh, I don't dare to try any alcohol for a few days um, I just realised because I've been under the weather I haven't been drinking coffee in four days and of course not only being under the weather I had also a headache and then I started thinking well I today wanted my first cup of coffee in like four days and when I sat down and drank it like the headache started going away and like yeah. okay so the <laughs> so the headache was not a result of me being sick it's just a an effect of not drinking coffee yeah. so at least I got uh, rid of one symptom just a bunch left you that being said the poison levels yeah well, that being said uh, of course on a totally unrelated issue but also kind of related um i now got pictures of my head <laughs> yay it's uh, it's not often i'm having portraits taken i do film myself a lot uh, for social media but uh, now i had a professional take pictures of me and uh, yeah it's cool is it is it grossly empty like steve bell creates his head <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Just as polished on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, not as weathered, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, are you all good? Yeah. Yeah. Sure, sure is. I got a. I'm gonna have a recheck in six months. They didn't find anything that uh, explained uh, the tickling in the arm, uh, and I'm still holding a. A finger on it being a nerve being pinched or something because my shoulder is still a bit wacky. Have you had the cat fleed lately? <laughs> uh, <laughs> much. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, that's that's one of the issues, of course, when you when you do these tests and of course they scan you and then, of course, uh, we didn't find anything. And but. It's very common when you do these tests that you find something that you didn't expect. And uh, and then there was a lot of things in Latin. Of course, I could send it to you and you could probably explain what kind of flowers I have in my head. But <laughs> 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 yeah. Please do. bamboo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm going in again in six months just to check that it's uh, something that's been there a long time and not changing. So, yeah, all good. Fantastic. Good to know. Not quite ready to see the back of you just yet. <laughs> no, me neither. So now I'm uh, 
looking into uh, which one of the pictures of course they take of course pictures all the way around so you can actually um, they have this online uh, page where you can log on and download all the pictures but they also have online software where you can look at all the picture pictures morphed together so it's like a 3d model of your head you're just choosing if you want to see it from the top side down or from the side and then you can just adjust at what kind of depth you want to see the picture so it's it's nice just fiddling around with it and like oh there's my teeth and trying to figure out all right there's my eyes and so it's a learning experience and did you not know where your teeth and your eyes were before (laughs) (laughs) you see those in the mirror (laughs) yeah yeah but then it's uh it's mirrored so it's uh, yeah (laughs) But yeah, it's uh, trying to decide which picture I want to uh, actually print out and put on the wall. It'd make a hell of a yeah, sticker, but... that wouldn't it? If just a photo of the inside of your head. Oh, that'd be fantastic. <laughs> Literally behind the mistakes, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> inside the mistakes, yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> well, maybe, yeah, stickers, that was a brilliant idea. <laughs> just going to send stickers of my head to people. Oh, that's brilliant. <laughs> Can you do them like, layered? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So they put like 10 of them together to build up and you just peel them off one at a time to go deeper and deeper. Yeah, that's the thing. Can I use them in the layering tool for a 3D printer and then just <laughs> build a replica of my brain? That should actually work. Yeah, you must be able to do that. Yeah. That'd be really that's cool. A cool idea. Yeah, a 3D model of your own brain. Yeah. Spare parts? Yeah. Then you'll <laughs> never, leave, never lose your eyes and your teeth again, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually... I've, I've, I've been to uh, the dentist uh, quite a lot, uh, having uh, uh, correcting teeth and so on at an early age. And of course, I've been an active bloke, so <laughs> there's been an odd chip here and there. But I, I realized that a lot of the tools that the dentists are using, I already have. I mean, it is a Dremel, uh, and <laughs> I'm pretty sure I have more accessories than an average dentist. So it's like, but it is working. It's a bit awkward working on yourself. And of course, in the mirror where everything is mirrored, uh, it's, it's a bit awkward. But I'm pretty yeah. sure that if I could take my teeth out and work on them on my workbench, I could do just a decent job as any dentist with a little practice. <laughs> At least now, if in. I could have a th- 3D model. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Getting them out is easy. Yeah. 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 Harder. But that being said, uh, I remember my, my father went to the dentist uh, at a relatively old age, uh, and I... They removed some teeth and they put new in uh, on titanium screws. And that got me thinking, if I some way down the line got a few teeth changed where they are fastened in titanium screws, I would probably fall for the temptation of, can I make some attachments that I can screw (laughs) out the tooth and put in something else? I mean, can I epoxy a tooth with a lead light in it or something so it really like, ding, when you smile or... (laughs) (laughs) You just want a set of drill bits in in your mouth instead? I can't can't think of a good good example of something I'd want as as a tooth attachment, to be fair. Yeah, I would try to think of that too. Yeah. Unless you could have like... I think Jaws have already done it. Say again. Yeah, I think Jaws has already been yeah. done, so... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Go back to the bamboo, perhaps? Yeah. I mean, you have the golden tooth, and then, of course, y- you can take it out when you don't want to look as gangster, uh, but, uh, yeah. Why would you not want to look as gangster? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> but then again, if would I have gold? I, I think... I mean, gold is jewelry. I don't really associate that with being gangster. I mean, rusty metal would be more gangster to me, but well, there would probably be other issues. <laughs> I think the gangsters, don't they have platinum at the moment? Gold yeah. is more old school. I would pirate-y. want titanium, just because that's a material I like. Um, just to have all your teeth would- replaced with bullets. 
<laughs> Just don't bite down too hard. <laughs> Blow your own fucking head off. <laughs> and die of lead poisoning later. I think biting down and having a titanium tooth, I mean the, the, the tooth in the other jaw, wouldn't really like that, would it? Did we lose Tim? I think we did. Looks like it. I'm yeah. sure he'll be back. That's a shame. Yeah, it was going well, wasn't it? I thought it was going well anyway. Yeah, it was a, he was a yeah. nice chap. Yeah. yeah I really yeah. liked him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm going to miss him. Mm, <laughs> I think your gain is a bit high, Glenn. Is it? Yeah, we well, can we, hear we, you. Like, you can I, hear I, your I, chair I, and oh, bones cracking and everything. It's the chair. I shoved yeah. some foam in it earlier and I thought I'd cured it, but obviously not. <laughs> oh, you should drench it in WD-40. <laughs> it, it was very obvious when you scratched something out on your paper just oh, a minute ago. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I can hear that pretty. <laughs> that there were well. so many knocks and bangs last, last week in the edit, wasn't there? Sorry about that. <laughs> nah, it's fine. Yeah, it's, it's low effort January, so yeah. it's fine. Yeah. Are you back, Tim? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> I don't really know. It said it had no internet, and now I do again. I don't. Ah, okay, we can hear you. Pass. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's all right. Still no camera. <laughs> <laughs> Still no pants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's, that's self-inflicted. <laughs> <laughs> Ever thought about going back to YouTube, Tim? Are you done with that now? Uh, a very. I very nearly made a video when I did... Did you see the scaffold board <laughs> vinyl desk thing I made? Um, how long ago was that? About f- maybe four months ago. Like, uh, a friend of mine asked for it, and he's done me a load of favours. He's a plumber, so every oh, okay. time when I was renovating our house, every time I ate a pipe, he came down and fixed it, which was <laughs> three times. Um, so I sort of owed him one. Three. Um and he, he had these scaffold boards. I went, yeah, yeah, I'll make you a thing. And uh, I started I started videoing it all, but it just had so much time to making stuff. I don't have that sort of patience. If if, if someone had come round and like, video me while I'm doing stuff, yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I just I just can't I just can't be asked really. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's not a team. Like, that's jumped. why I like reels. Yeah, like reels. You can just move the camera two or three times, doing the same thing. Chuck it together with a bit of music and then chat at the end. Yeah. Not job, to, uh, job to badger. Are you, not, are you not tempted to put your reels up on YouTube as shorts? Uh, I, I, when you guys talk about shorts, I do think, oh, maybe I could do that. But then people are just going to ask me to make YouTube videos, aren't they? Not not being like big edit. Like if they're just going to be, you know what I mean? If you can make shorts, I'd be like, oh, wait, making YouTube videos. And then <laughs> it's just the same thing again, isn't it? Well, I but I think it's sad because you, I think you now have a completely new demographic that only operate on shorts on YouTube. So I think you have a growing number of channels just producing shorts, not yeah. ever touching a long form video. Yeah, I it's very rare I watch shorts as well. There's like there's one Italian chef that I, I watch his shorts in. He's, he lives in Canada. I watch his shorts just because it's funny. Um, and then that's about it really I don't watch anyone else's never but then I watch stories <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel I get a lot I get my fill of shorts from from the kids watching them and I mean it's they are it's so much garbage out there that just aimed for for kids to, it's so bad yeah, <laughs> and, and all, more ho, most more than half of them are like like and subscribe or we kill this puppy more or less. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've um, we don't let us watch YouTube now. We, they they can watch Outdoor Boys. That's it. Really? Right. They, obviously, they'll they'll sneak off and put it on like, but most of the time it, they're either watching like football highlights or just Outdoor Boys because you just don't know what's coming through on it, do you? Especially on the on the kids stuff like. Yeah, you have to be and monitor them to. Yeah. You can't l- set them free and just have them <laughs> roam out. You have to keep an eye on them. Yeah, and it just means spending time with them and stuff like that. So we just just banned YouTube altogether. It's a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably easier. But when, once you open that box, it's really hard to close it again. Yeah, we've um, we've yeah. taken it one step further. We've actually introduced the cat to watching shorts. <laughs> 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 I don't know what it is. There's a 
there's a particular short or reel and it's a dog running into a ball pit and this dog just runs into the ball pit, crashes about, runs back out and runs back in. And the cat is absolutely fascinated with this particular reel. Mm-hmm. So last night we were doing the uh, tax return and Shell's got the laptop on her knee and the, there's, you know, there's a few wires dangling and whatnot and the cat's just being a little bastard biting all the wires and whatnot. So we put this video on for him and he just sat and watched that for five minutes while we finished up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Something nice. mesmerising about it for him. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it is a struggle. Uh, I, I picked them up at the kindergarten today and from the get-go they were complaining and they were nagging and they were arguing and it's like getting them out of the car and inside the house and nothing was right they couldn't get their shoes off and when I tried to help them that wasn't the right thing to do and then they should <laughs> what not and it's like oh Jesus Christ and I just switched on the television and put something on and then I, I need 10 minutes to make food <laughs> and yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah it has its uses yeah, it's, a, it's a parent sure weapon yeah <laughs> yeah Mine have started now. They've all got, um, we, we call them iPads, but they're not. They're just um, those cheap Amazon Fire tablet things, but it's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? So we just call them iPads. Um, <laughs> so the, they all sit in the same room now playing Roblox and just shout at each other that they've just shot the other one. Or, <laughs> and it's like, you just, all you can hear is just like shouting and carrying on in another room. You're like, what's going on? Like, Oh, we're just playing this game with each other. You're like, why don't you actually play a game with each other? You know I mean? <laughs> to put put your iPads down and just shout with each other anyway. You're like, what? what's the computer helping out with here? Yeah, <laughs> get them some Nerf guns and some walkie-talkies. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we've uh, got quite a good array of Nerf. Not enough Nerf guns, but that's obviously impossible, isn't it? It's like having yeah. enough Yeah, you never have enough. Have you, no. like... have you gone down the route of upgrading them yet with the kids? I've, I've what we... We did, used to watch the videos of the guys having big Nerf Wars, um, uh, and yeah, I could see that being a slippy slope. But yeah, me and my son I might, used I might to get myself one and upgrade one. Yeah, me and my son used to do it every weekend. Every every weekend we'd start off on something, and then he'd leave me a list of things to buy: bigger batteries and bigger motors <laughs> <laughs> for the next I mean, weekend. That, <laughs> that being said, we had this discussion a while back and I mentioned this engineer spending two years on perfecting um, this Nerf gun and he said like I don't remember if it was a uh, hundred nerfs a second or something like that and it's like it was so insane that nobody's going to touch that so I'm not even going to try <laughs> and then a couple of weeks ago is I just realized well somebody took that challenge and he set a goal for 200 nerfs a freaking second (laughs) and like the engineering he had to put into it and he had to make like a drum magazine where all the nerfs were like in a a helical order because he had to spin that drum up to an insane speed and then he had to have like an ejector system to launch them out and I, I don't remember if he managed 200 or if he actually managed in that video I think it's a working project but I mean that beat the other guy by a mile and it's like it's insane. you couldn't even see anything it was a blur it's like whew, and then of course it's four hours cleaning up your floor <laughs> yeah reloaded could you not just put yeah. 200 nerf gun nerf darts in a catapult and fire it once <laughs> Yeah, I was that thinking like a cluster bomb. Just like <laughs> yeah. one button and poof. <laughs> Ooh, that was cool. Do you have Nerf hand grenades? That's probably I think, a thing. I think there is a thing. Yeah, I think there are yeah. Nerf hand grenades. You can get paintball hand grenades, can't you? I might be thinking of paintballs. Yeah, yeah but those are... If there was... The, I, the ones I'm thinking of are more like a pressurized can that just spreads the paint out it's not a bang it's more like a spring uh, a sprinkler of, of sorts there you go then there's a project for you KJ yeah that's not fun it's not, it's not just a just a firework in a can of jewel looks that you throw, throw at one of your yeah that's 
<laughs> Nothing bad could happen. <laughs> Just five five liters all everywhere. <laughs> We're using gloss or emulsion. Yeah, it'd have to be gloss, wouldn't it? <laughs> I think that's a good point to uh, a good time to wrap up the main episode. Okay, thanks for joining us for episode 20, and we'll see you again on Tuesday for a half pint. Thanks a lot, Tim. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers. Cheers. Bye. 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 <laughs>